I've received a, a couple of um, questions on my Flickr page regarding stripping down of a binocular. Uh, this is a video to show you roughly what you need to do to strip down a sort of 70s Poro binocular, uh, what, what tools you'll need, and basically how to carry the procedure out. Uh, first things you're going to need is a set of screwdrivers, um, sort of some decent screwdrivers. Something like this, a sort of, sort of fairly positioned screwdrivers. You're going to need a pencil, and you're going to need a pair of gloves. You'll also need some clean cloth, and you'll need something to clean the glass with. I suggest you use a mild um, window cleaner, which is in this bottle here. Um, you start on a poroprism binocular like this, we'll start on the top or eye end. First of all, we need to do is we need to remove the uh, focus bridge. So the first thing you do on the binocular like this is you undo the cap in the middle here. You see, remove that, and inside there you probably won't be able to see it with the camera, but inside there there's a screw. You reach down, and you can reach it with this screwdriver. Give it a twist, and we can get to this one. It's a Phillips on this one, which is unusual. It's the first time that's ever happened. You put a Phillips screwdriver in there, and you undo the screw. And it won't actually fall out. I'm doing about. 10 turns and now wind the focus control up and you'll find that the whole focusing arm will come out like that. Okay, put that to one side for a minute. Now you need to just have a quick look along around the top of the prism plate to so make sure there's no excess debris there. Just if there is, just wipe it off with a cloth. Just wipe it off, remove any of the loose debris. Now, what you need to do then is you need to remove the ocular guides. Usually they will just undo with my hand, like these ones do. So you remove those, start one side at a time, so remove that and put that to one side. Right. Now you need to take the prism cover off, this is the prism cover, so screwdriver, remove the screw, put that to one side, okay and that exposes the, uh, the prism and the prism clip. Now what you need to do now is you need to mark this prism, and I usually mark a V in it, on that edge there. Just mark it there with a the pencil. All you're doing now is you're marking so you know which way the prism came out. You can see in this prism actually there is a, a flat to that side and it's chamfered that side. So you can see clearly and you shouldn't have any problem at all. What I also just suggest you do is you mark the prism just here, along the prism shelf, down and along the prism shelf. You can see this, I'll try and mark it. It's not always very clear. So what you need to do is mark it there. So you can, if the prism moves slightly, you'll know exactly how far it's, it's got to slide into the slot to be in the right place. Once you're confident you've marked that, then you can remove the prism clip. The prism clip on this one just pings out like that. Some have a screw one end, some have screwed both ends. There's various different ways of holding them in. So once you remove the prism clamp, you can then tip the prism out one side. If you get the prism one side and twist it, you'll see it's moving. Now you see these prisms are glued in. But we need to get this prism out because it's dirty. So get the prism by one side and just give it a wriggle. Eventually it will just pop out. Just wriggle it back and forth until the glue lets go. There you go, there's the prisms out. Right, now just make sure there's no loose glue that's broken up inside. And then what you need to do now is you need to clean the clean the prism. Now this is a uh, this is an uncoated prism. It's a very basic cheap pair of binoculars, this, this is just a demonstration really. What I tend to do is just put a, a light smearing of glass cleaner on. 
piece of clean cloth. Wipe the hypotenuse first and the two other faces, and then with a clean cloth, remove the excess off, and then have a look in the light and the prism. We're aiming for is a clean, without any smears, no any fungal growth that was on the prism needs to be removed. We're looking for a nice, clean, shiny prism. This is where the gloves are worth it because trying to put them back in, if you touch the glass, you'll be in and out, in and out, trying to remove fingerprints all the time. That prism is nice and clean now. So that prism can go back in. So basically make sure you put it around the right way, as I said in the uh, previous, previous drawing. Wriggle the prism into place. Now, depending on what type of binocular it is, some have a very tight prism um, shelf, so the prism is actually will be very reluctant to go back in again. You must never actually force them, but you can wriggle the prism about to uh, try and get it to seat correctly. There we go, that one's back in. Also be advised that if you're assembling the prism, I don't know if you can see here, but you're trying to see the top of the prism in there must be flat with the face of the binocular. If it's canked over like that, even the slightest bit, you'll have a major collimation error. Um, so you must make sure that, that was flat and how it was when it came out. The idea is to get everything exactly the same place it was. Um, you're never going to get perfect collimation by doing this, but you will be able to hopefully get a usable binocular. Alright, then you replace the clip. Um, you tend to find the clips bend a bit with age, so what I tend to do is invert them so they've got a bit more pressure behind them again. So push one side in of the plate into the clip holder and just clip the clip in back in like that. That might have been that looks actually very easy. Sometimes they're very, very strong and you'll be fighting with that. Uh, replace the um, prism cover, just make sure there's no crap around the outside of this prism cover. Place the new prism the, the prism cover back on. Um, now put the get the screw and put the any prism cover screws in, but don't tighten them up. Just nip that up, and now replace the ocular tube. Now be absolutely sure that this tube doesn't cross thread. Um, not for, so much for damage, but if you don't spot it, you'll have a nightmare trying to get the binocular aligned when you're at different focal lengths. You'll find at one point it's in collimation, and at other point it's miles out. It took me ages to work out what this was. Um, once you get, some of those are a bit hard to start, like this one's being very awkward. There we go, started. So wind that in, like that. Once that's tight, then you can tighten the prism plate up. Okay. And then, basically you do exactly the same, side, same thing for the other side. Remove it down, strip it all down, clean it up, mark the prisms before you take them out, put them back in. And then you start on the objective side. This is the objective side. So what you must do now, this binocular is actually using prism tilts for collimation, but we're going to assume that it's using um, centric rings for the uh, collimation. Most of them do, and as as we assume that that's what's going to happen, what I'm going to do is make it draw a line on the objective bell down to the furthest prism plate, or the prism plate for the objectives. So we draw a pencil line there, just about make that out on the camera. So that what that will do is allow, allow me to tighten it back up to the, the the place it came originally. If you over tighten it or under tighten it, it uses collimation rings, you lose collimation. So you must must do that. Okay, remove that. And does that? Okay, and that's the objective bell and the internal light baffle. As you see there, yes, you might be able to see there if I get it in the light. You can see, yeah, there you go, there's a quite a bit of haze inside the inside of this objective and also a slight amount of fungus. And it's not too bad, but there you go, you can see in the light there, that could do with a bit of cleaning, but we'll uh, sort that out in a minute. So put that to one side, remove the uh, objective's prism cover, same as you did with the top cover. Let's screw to one side. And this is a little bit more fiddly because the prisms are much deeper inside the binocular casing. But the same principle, slide the clip off, 
clip out. The clip came out quite easy on that. They're not always as easy as that. Get the prism, rock it back and some forwards. It comes free. Sometimes you can actually use a screwdriver. Don't, don't get right on the edge of the glass, but just give the screwdriver a bit of a push halfway down the prism, not near a glass edge, or it, it can crack and shatter. Um, just to get the glue moving. Tip, the, tip it out. Now it's got the prism out again. Of course, what I didn't do, which I should have done, and, should, and I did say, mark the prism. Um, it's obvious because this this prism has a uh, a chamfer on one side. Okay, clean the prism up. With a uh, bit of glass cleaner. And this, this prism had a very, the beginnings of a fungal growth on it, but we've, uh, luckily because the prism is not coated, it hasn't done any damage to the uh, surface of the glass. It's a bit dirt. it's a bit greasy this prism actually. Um, get another wipe over. The good thing about it, if it's an uncoated prism like early binoculars or the or the very budget 70s, 60s, 70s binoculars, you can give them quite a wipe. Well, you're not going to do any damage to the glass with a cloth. Um, just make sure you get all this all the stuff off. You can use your breath on it as well to uh, always helps. This one's quite Dirty actually. Just try and get the worst of this off. The less haze that you have, you have on the prism, the uh, the better contrast you'll get to the image. This this binocular is never going to be great because it's a it's an uncoated 20 by 50, so it's only got a tiny th uh, two mil exit pupil. Uh, well, 40 well, ten ten and a half mil exit pupil. It's going to be very dim and a pretty unusable binocular anyway. But this is just a good demonstration. So clean all the muck off the prism, so when you're happy with that, replace the prism back in the, uh, in the, in the case of the binocular, making sure it's back where it was. Now what I would suggest, if, there's, if there was prism glue, glue on the side of the prisms when you took them out, don't take it off when you've got the prism out because it's often quite a good guide to know where the prism should fit when it goes back in. So I would leave that on if I were you. Um, as I say, it's a bit fiddly sometimes. That one's, it shouldn't, be any, it shouldn't be any rock or anything in the prism without the clip on. So if it's rocking about, there's a good chance it's not seated correctly. That's all right. Put the prism clip back in. As I say, maybe the other way round, it just holds the, holds the prism a bit firmer, especially now there's no glue in holding the thing in place. And this one's being a little bit more awkward to do. There we go. Make sure the prism clip is clear of the light path, so you don't want the prism clip hanging over the edge. Put it in so it's central to the uh, Central to the prism like that. Okay. Objective cover. Loose the done up screw. Right, objective bell. I'm not going to. I'll let you clean the inside of the uh, lens up if you need to. Same principle. Um, on a binocular with collimation screws, the tilt prisms, the tilt prism system that this binocular used, you can actually remove the the. Uh, you can actually remove the objective lens by moving that and undoing these rings here. That will release the objective. Be careful though, because they are prone to separation. To treat them with care, allow you to clean them easily. But you can't do that if it uses eccentric rings, unless you mark exactly the same exact place that the uh, lens came out. Um, but I wouldn't recommend it, to be honest with you. Okay, put the uh, beauty ring back on. Like that. 
getting something loose dust in there, pull it out to the light just to make sure. Right, and this is where most people lose collimation. You must make sure that screws in properly. And the way I do it is I loosely get hold of it and just keep winding it out and it will you'll feel it going click on the thread. Once it's clicking on the thread, start winding it in and it should find its own course back in. It doesn't always, this one's being tricky. The trouble is there's only a small amount of thread around there around the edge of the uh, binocular, see, you see around there? There's sort of 20-30% of the thread missing so it makes it hard for it to start. So wind it in again. As I see this one's a bit of a fiddle. Okay, that's started. And what you need to do, just wind it in. If it's tight, you can, there's something wrong, stop a minute and just check to see if it looks square. Yeah, the good thing is once you tighten it up, turn it back up to, to the mark we I showed you earlier. Tighten it to there. And then stand it on the table. If it rocks about, which this one doesn't, there's something cross-threaded. But that's fine. So that's one side of the binoculars cleaned. What you do now is you need to have a quick look at the uh, ocular and see if that's clear. And basically just hold it up to the light and see if it's see if it's hazy or not. 